This may be hard for some people to get through their thick heads, but the truth is there's not enough lithium to go around. There simply isn't enough lithium for the entire industry to transition to electric cars. What does this mean? Some manufacturers are going to lose out. By 2030, no one with a brain in their thick skulls, even the stupidest humans among us, are not going to want an internal combustion engine vehicle. They're going to want an electric one. It's sort of like saying to your mate, you know what, you can have a smartphone, uh, say an iPhone 10 or whatever, or you can have a Nokia 3310 for the same money. You'd have to be the biggest doofus that ever lived to get the Nokia, right? It's going to be the same situation. But American manufacturers actually might have one key advantage here that no one's talking about. Now, right now, lithium and the cost of lithium has been massively affecting who? The Chinese, believe it or not, they're paying three times more for lithium now than they were at this time last year. Now, obviously, this is affecting American manufacturers as well, but there may be an ace up the sleeve when it comes to lithium in America. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to our Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. Couldn't do it without you. Really, really appreciate your support. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon page. If you want to support us, that would be unreal. Now, there's obviously different kinds of battery chemistries, but when it comes to cars, not energy, energy storage, but when it comes to cars, for the next decade, at least, you pretty much have to have lithium. Sure, you might not need, necessarily need nickel. You might not necessarily need cobalt. You might not necessarily need aluminium or graphite or any one of a range of other rare earths or rare metals. Because you can use LFP batteries or you can, there's all kinds of things you can do, manganese, etc. right? But... The one universal constant here is the need for lithium. Recently, America just passed a law in the Senate which requires American vehicle manufacturers in order to qualify for massive subsidies for their EVs, in particular massive for light trucks or heavy trucks, $30,000, $40,000 subsidies, and pretty big subsidies for passenger vehicles as well. They need eventually to have a percentage of those battery materials coming from the US. Well, if we want more lithium from the USA, then galvanic energy may have enough for 50 million EVs. One of the biggest elements of the recently passed Reduction Act or the IRA is a requirement that electric vehicles start using batteries that contain minerals from friendly countries with a special emphasis on battery minerals from the USA. A month before this monumental bill was passed, Oklahoma-based Galvanic Energy announced some large lithium potential in Utah. According to the company, a recent third-party resource report validated Galvanic Energy's smack over formation prospect, smack, yeah, interesting name, for a, for a mine, as one of the largest lithium brine resources in North America with sufficient lithium to produce enough batteries for 50 million electric vehicles. That is a literal game changer. I've heard that, I've thrown that word around a few, a few times. When I use it, I, I generally, you know, I generally do consider whether or not it's really true. Yeah, 50 million EVs, you can tell. that You can see that is, that is a game changer because this is not the only lithium deposit in the US. Put them all together, Add this 50 million, who knows, we could have enough lithium in the US, or at least in North America, if we include Canada as well, for a couple hundred million EVs. As we've already reached peak car, clearly, that's actually a pretty big number. Naturally, says Clean Technica, it has to be commercially competitive for galvanic energy to get to work extracting the lithium in order to move towards such an ambitious opportunity. It takes years to open a mine You've got to do feasibility studies, they need financing, they need permits. Lots and lots happens before they'll get to the point 
where they're getting lithium out of the ground. But seeing as lithium cost has gone up so much, it's very likely this project will be put into commission because lithium costs so much right now. The IRA will help stimulate such competitiveness and extraction in the US. That's important. Clearly, they're focused on that. So clearly, there will be some sort of support from the government in order to start getting this lithium out of the ground in the USA and ideally refining it where it's mined, or at least within the United States somewhere. Over the past year, the company has completed well testing and detailed reservoir modeling to significantly advance its 120,000 acre lithium prospect in southern Arkansas, Galvanic Energy writes. The company builds itself as a geoscience-driven resource exploration company that employs innovative proprietary discovery methods to identify natural resources essential to the U.S. renewable energy sector. The aforementioned third-party tests, which were conducted by Apex Geoscience Limited, found 290 milligrams per litre to 520 milligrams per litre of lithium concentrations in the Arkansas prospect after drilling test wells that penetrated the smack over formation. I can't get over that name. Anyway, Galvanic Energy calls those results some of the highest reported values in North American brines. The tests also found bromine concentrations of 3,700 to 6,000 milligrams per litre. Overall, the analysis estimated 4 million tonnes of lithium carbonate equivalent, LCE, and 10 million tonnes of elemental bromine in Galvanic Energy's smack over prospect. Clean Technica says that a search for Galvanic Energy on our site comes up empty. However, this is a big name. This company is going places, and this is just the start, in my view, of what will be a mining renaissance in North America. There's a number of projects going up right now. There's some in Canada going on. In fact, there's one going on right not far away from where Tesla hopes to build a gigafactory in Canada. That's a nickel mine. I, I actually interviewed the owner of that nickel mine on this channel. I'll put a link in the description below to that interview, and there'll be a part two to that interview as well, where I talk about the possibility of Tesla potentially buying that mine. Now, remember, in the new IRA, there are a number of tax incentives, massive, massive tax incentives for companies to mine, process, and recycle battery materials. The United States, in my view, made a very smart decision doing this. It should have been done years ago, but better late than never. The United States needs, or and Canada, needs to shore up as much battery mineral supply as it can. That is hugely important for the future of the U.S. automotive industry. That's what they're trying to do. And honestly, I applaud that decision. More and more companies like this will spring up and start ramping production of lithium over the next few years. Yes, it has been slow, but now with the U.S. government's increased assistance, there'll be more and more incentive for these companies to get that lithium, nickel, whatever else it is, out of the ground and into EVs as quickly as is possible. In my view, that's a good thing. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.